So here's the deal. I got two days to get this piece of junk running and I can't seem to get it running. And so what I've done so far is screw the timing up with a perfectly running car that I messed it up. I need to put, get the timing in. I need to get a front bumper done. I need to get a mini spool put in the rear end. And I need to put a roof rack on top of the car for my spare tire. All of that in two days. And we need to leave Friday morning at 7.30. So since I'm inadequate to get timing put in a car, I call Travis at Perpetual Project because he knows what he's doing and I don't. I'm good at breaking stuff. He's good at fixing stuff. So when Travis gets here, which I'm praying he hurries up because you know I'm running out of daylight and uh, it's gonna be wonderful. And so I'll let you know when he gets here and he's gonna probably say, Leah, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. That vacuum leak's probably got a leak. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so walk me through, where are we at? What do, what do, we, what do we got going on here? Okay, so from what I understood, I had to get, I put this at top dead center. Okay. I think I put it at top dead center. Just go ahead and say that. I pretty, I think I did. And so I did what you said. The pointer was pointing toward number one. Okay. So here's the number one, number five, so on and so on. Okay. Counterclockwise. Then I put everything back together, tried to fire it up, and it's doing, it's just whirling over. Like it's not getting spark. But then I pulled the spark plug out, and it's getting spark. Okay. So I, I already looked, and it looks like the firing order is right as long as this is number one. But I have a question. Did you get angry and throw this spark plug? No, it failed. Because it doesn't have enough gap. <laughs> no. I noticed that a second ago. I was like, hey, I need to gas that thing again. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it on top dead center now or no? I uh, doubt it. Okay. Are you barring it over with a ratchet? I can. Dang, I forgot that thing got closed by it. Don't is it dropped it in quotation marks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More like I've done this now 1,500 times. I'm tired of doing it. Okay. I got that flashlight there if you want to see if you can see the 10 degree mark. That's when the spring flashlight. That's all the way up, is it not? Like, yeah, it should no, be all the way up. So it's not collapsed. No. Okay, so I <coughs> maybe I did this wrong. That's how I. I so was, if but, you watch. Oh, going backwards now. So see it opening? Mm -hmm. So now, if we turn it around, now it's going down and the valve is closing. So now the valve's closed, and as it comes up the next time, it's going to be ready to fire it. That's going to be the the compression stroke or the power stroke on the number one cylinder. So now it's got to go, get to turn it about. Flashlight down here. So that's 10 degrees before top dead center. If we go a little bit further, you can see we'd be on the zero mark mm -hmm. or 10 degrees before that. So I know that's what I did wrong the first time because I put it at zero. Uh, that, it still should have started. It'll start at zero, it just won't start easily. Oh, it started. It's just backfiring like me after eating Mexican. Backfire. <laughs> Where's your distributor hold down? Little knob? Yeah. So it plugs. Oh, the one that goes down here in the block. Oh, look right there on the uh, magnetic beam. Oh, okay. I'm going to take all these off because we have to reset them anyway. Screwdriver out here anywhere? Yeah, it's out there. Oh. Hey, I was like, we're supposed to move it. He's just like, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'm like, is that normal? Yeah, heck, come on, I know what I'm doing. Like, okay. I'm watching. So you, if you don't, like, the whole reason we're setting it up this way is so we don't have to try to search for it. You can just look for it once you get the firing order right, but it, I find it's easier to set it so that it's pretty close on timing when you first fire it up so you don't have to try to look for it. Yeah. We used to do it that way too, just move it around until it tried to fire and then make fine adjustments once it tried to fire, mm -hmm. but this is, recently, this is easier for me. A lot simpler. And so the reason we started doing it this way is when we were building race cars, when you're breaking in a flat tap of cam, you want it to fire instantly. You don't want it to spend much time on the starter because it's not getting lubrication while it's on the starter. There's not enough oil to lubricate the cam. So you need it to fire up immediately. So we started setting the timing before we put, while we were putting it together so that it would do that. It would mm -hmm. fire as soon as you hit the key. But it was pretty bad is I plugged the fuel up to the vacuum. Oh, on the no. carburetor. So I'm just sitting here. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And then all of a sudden it's like a vapor lock. I was like, oh. So that, that's not actually a vapor lock. That's a hydraulic lock. Yeah. So I take all the plugs out. And I think I th it was number five over there. When I pulled the spark plug out, not even trying to whirl it over. So I was like, oh. So I go to whirl it over. And it shoots gas all the way to that wall. All the way to this wall. And I'm like, yep. I'm glad I kind of didn't have that on camera. Now I do. <laughs> okay, where is this going? The vacuum back there. Where does that vacuum come from? I'd be lying to you. I think that's a vacuum modulator for the transmission. Oh. That's not a vacuum source. That needs to have vacuum. Oh, uh, so that could come from this back piece. Put one vacuum to that and... And hook that up to that and then hook your distributor up to this one here i'm not that's the only vacuum line i see on that carburetor so i'm gonna guess that supported vacuum we can try it what's this one that is uh something for don't worry about that one okay. that's so that's not really a vacuum source because it's in the air cleaner so the, the air cleaner is not really going to build much vacuum so should... all right we're just going to leave this plugged in it's probably going to leak a little bit but it, it should run so How many guess, times you heard me say that? <laughs> Let's see if it'll start. Fire's the first time I'm buying a cold beer. I think you just got frustrated and you went and I'm just going to start throwing everything at it and <laughs> sometimes it just takes somebody to come over and kind of calm down, Yeah. start at the basics. No, you're 100% right. I mean, did you get... I, and I know. I, so We've done that too. Yeah. Uh, two days ago, I, I was having the hardest time that you've ever seen putting a stupid light switch in to the point where I started throwing stuff. So it happens to everybody. <laughs> And it was, it was a simple nut that takes a special spanner wrench that I didn't have, but I made one and I was, it, I was a bad day. I was having yeah. a bad day. But, so I would say, let's get your fan installed. We'll get it up to operating temperature and then we'll see if we can adjust the carburetor. I want to clean the marks on that balancer and mark zero with a white Sharpie or a white paint marker or something if you've got one. Yellow. It'll work. Just something so I can see a little better. I think 
you're right at 10 degrees and then full advance is about 35 degrees, which should be pretty close. problem that's cool it coming from the uh up there because it's got float head gaskets like i thought i had a month and a half ago but everybody told me it was exhaust or intake or whatever but no it's for sure blowed head gasket well it's not for sure a blowed head gasket but it's definitely have, has a problem and that's that's one symptom and then uh if you look Right over here, the. I'm gonna turn that toward the. I don't think it turns. Oh, there it is. It, you can see all the the sludge inside there. That's a, another symptom, and the fact that it's blowing steam out of the valve covers is another symptom. And uh, the milky oil that is pretty much a fresh oil change. That's the last symptom. Yep, looks like chocolate milk. So. Chucky's gonna take a break and work on bumpers or something more fun for a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna build an off-road bumper for a car that don't run, put a winch on it, because eventually it's gonna run. But uh, that's what we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna work on a, a bumper for the front, put a winch on it, maybe work on a roof rack, but I doubt this car is going to the gambler in two days. It might. But it might. But he's gonna take a break from the engine and collect his thoughts yes. and recover a little bit and then uh, dig into. So place your bets in the comments if you think he's gonna make it there. <laughs> <laughs> 